welcome to The Contenders. I'm your host, Peg and Young. All of us at The Contenders wish you a Merry Christmas. The year 2004 is coming to an end, and I hope you enjoy the holidays with your family and friends. Let's welcome today's Contenders onto our stage. <laughs> Welcome back. We have the Elan team, Yoon Young Chan and Park Kyu Byung. So it's been about six months since we saw yes. you last. It's great to see you again. I'm really happy to see you again. And our team name Elan is, came from our study group and mm -hmm. French word meaning fly high. Mm. Well, I hope you fly high today. Yeah. Uh, welcome back and good luck to you. <laughs> Going against the Elan team, we have the Snatch team again. Uh, Derek O'Rourke and Paul Sahoda. It's been a couple months since we saw you last. Yeah, it's been two months. Uh, it's great to be back. Great to see you and David again. And actually, we, me and Derek noticed you changed your hair since the last time we came. <laughs> yeah. We think it's a great look for you. Oh, thank you very much. It's a Christmas game, so we're feeling very jolly today, I hope. Good luck, and let's begin our game. Hey. Now we will begin with our multiple choice questions. And Elan, since you are to my left, you get to choose first. Q, U, I, and Z. Q. Going with question set Q, number one. In Taekwondo, how many tan levels are there? One, six, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine. If you're not sure, you can use chance. Chance. And using chance, we'll take away two of the incorrect choices. I see, Ailan, you're getting used to our set. And now it's your turn to choose. We need your final choice. Number three. Ah, there are actually nine tan in Taekwondo. I imagine Taekwondo is not your sport. <laughs> no? <laughs> All right. Um, what sports do you do? Do you uh, play? Basketball, volleyball, <laughs> except taekwondo. <laughs> uh, all right, all ball sports. All right. Well, Elan, uh, we've got lots of the quiz ahead. Um, well, uh, it was a good try. We encourage you. <laughs> and now, Snatch, you've got a choice, U, I, or Z. Uh, we want you. Going with question set U, number one. Of the following, if you take a certain amount of black paint and mix it with an equal amount of white paint, what color would you have? One purple, two orange, three gray, four brown. Three gray. Yes. <laughs> Question two. Recently, this baseball player received his fourth consecutive National League MVP award. Of the following, who is this player with a total of seven MVP awards under his belt? One, Roger Clemens. Two, Adrian Beltre. Three, Kurt Schilling. Four, Barry Bonds. Number four, Barry Bonds. Yes. Go to question three. Of the following, how many bars are needed to form the number eight on a typical LCD watch. One, six, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine. Uh, number two, seven. You've yet to use chance, we go to question four. The official mascot for the 2006 World Cup in Germany, named Goleo Six, was recently unveiled. Of the following, which animal does Goleo represent? One, tiger, two, lion, three, bear, four, pig. We like to use chance. Using chance, we take away two of the incorrect choices, and now you've got your final decision to make, snatch. Number two, lion. Almost halfway through, we go to question five. 
Recently, this British film star was named the sexiest man alive by People magazine in the US. Who is this? One, Jude Law. Two, Hugh Grant. Three, Sean Connery. Four, Richard Gere. He's a handsome man, and number one, Jude Law. Yes. Well, uh, they're all pretty handsome, aren't they? Yeah, yeah <laughs> we heard so. question six. Recently, Russia announced that it will grant a visa to this person for the first time since the collapse of the USSR. Of the following, who is this? One, Koizumi. Two, Dalai Lama. Three, Aung San Suu Kyi. Four, Arroyo. Well, with number two, Dalai Lama. And that was a good choice. The exiled Tibetan spiritual leader will be getting a visa. And now we've come to question seven. Of the following, which opera title is not a woman's name? One, Rigoletto. Two, Carmen. Three, Manon Lusco. And four, Turando. I guess. I guess. I guess one. Uh, number one, Rigoletto. Yes. We go to question eight. Of the following, which is not a time period included in the age of reptiles and dinosaurs? One, Jurassic. Two, Triassic. Three, Cretaceous. Four, Precambrian. Three, I think, refers to rocks. Snatch, your answer please. Uh, number three, Cretaceous. Actually, it is pre-Cambrian. And Snatch, you have 70 points in the board and it means you're in the lead. And now we will give you 100 seconds to go through a list of 20 words in a pre-chosen category. This is the password section. And Elan, it's your turn first. And your pre-chosen category was Charlie Chaplin. Yes. Are you ready? Ready. Go. M knows. M knows. Voice question. Pass. Pass. C Zhang Lin. Comedy. Put on. H. Put on. Pet. Pass. K film. The kid. Mm. London, the country. Uh, England, Britain. Mm. The capital of Australia. Melbourne. Uh, no, 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 not, not, not capital. The most popular city. Sydney. Mm. And film. Yeah, modern times. No sound S. Silent film. A award. Academy. G film. Uh, the Great Dictator. Pass. Pass. S country. Uh, Switzerland. Uh, Nazi and Mechanism. C. Mechanism. Mm, communist. Communism. C film. Uh, circus. Uh, city light. P. No sounds. Uh, Pentame. Yes. Pass. You've got quite a a lot of points up there now. Uh, you passed Black and White, which is a type of film that he made. Uh, and Robert Downey Jr. was the actor who played Charlie ah. Chaplin in a major Hollywood film. Elon, you have 140 points on the board. <laughs> now, Snatch, it is your turn. And 
now your category is Italy. Yes. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Go. P, food. Pasta. Pizza. Yes. M, crime organization. Mafia. C, structure. Coliseum. P, the pass. N, you burn CDs. Nero. Pass. Director, uh, that's a beautiful life. It's uh, a wonderful. Roberto. B, his <laughs> last name starts with a B. Benini. Benini, yeah. 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 Uh, M, artist. Michelangelo. V, city. V, Venice. Actress. First name's M. She was in. She's gorgeous. You think she's gorgeous? Monica Bellucci. Uh, A, type of suit. A fashion designer. Uh, Armani. Pass. D. Uh, pass, sorry. P, volcano. P, Pompeii. Pass. Uh, v. Person's name. First name Antonio. Ver Verdi? No. Pass. Uh, actor, Scarface. Uh, Al Pacino. Uh, a fountain. T. Trevi. You were in the right field with um, Antonio Vivaldi, is what we were looking for, with Four Seasons. And you passed also on the great poet Dante, as well as the movie Cinema Paradiso. However, mixed snatch, at the end of this section, you maintain your lead with 190 points on the board. <laughs> and now let's welcome Mr. David Huang onto our stage. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. So glad to be here. It, it is the, uh, actually the most wonderful time of the year for me. And I uh, hope it is for you. Are you doing OK in this holiday season, Unyang? Mm -hmm. OK, I'm glad to hear that. Um, by the way, that, that was a great couple sections. Uh, Ilan, uh, tough luck there on the first section. But uh, I guarantee you'll never forget that Taekwondo has nine <laughs> times. So see, something good always comes out of our contender's game. Anyway, guys, uh, if you guys uh, don't mind, I'm going to introduce the next section of this uh, game, OK? Uh, this next section is a round of non-multiple choice questions. The first team to buzz in will get the first chance to answer. Now, if that team gets that question wrong, the chance will be given to the other team. Now, if neither of you guys can figure it out, we're going to help you out with the help of a spelling hint that comes up on your screen uh, over here. Uh, there's 15 questions in all, 30 points per question, five seconds uh, to answer each one. And uh, I guess on this holiday uh, game, uh, we have a new rule that before you answer each answer and after you answer each answer you have to say ho 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 okay <laughs> okay i'm just kidding i'm sorry about that anyways though uh if you guys are ready without further ado we'll go ahead and get started question number one please all right question number one is about organizations nicole kinman following in the footsteps of fellow oscar winner angelina jolie became a new face of this organization According to recent news, the 37-year-old Australian was named Citizen of the World at a lavish ceremony hosted by this organization's Secretary General Kofi Annan. Its headquarters are in New York. Snatch. Uh, UN. UNICEF. The United Nations or the UN was what we were looking for. You, you're glad that our judges judged his first answer. <laughs> yes the UN. Um, we want to remind you that we want you to have one final answer to share with us. Sure. Thank you. We go to question two. All right, question number two is about animals. Scientists say that this animal probably use tiny magnetic particles in their beaks to sense our planet's, ma planet's magnetic field. New Zealand researchers claim that birds use their... Snatch. Kiwi. Ilan, it's your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. 
New Zealand researchers claim that the birds used their ability to create a map of the magnetic field and then use it to navigate back to their home loft. The claim casts serious doubt on a theory that says the birds use smell to navigate. What is this bird? Elon, five seconds. Let's take a look at the spelling hint. Elon. Pigeon. Yes, it is the pigeon. And with that, Elon, you have 170 versus Snatches 220. It's a close game. We go to question three. Uh, question three is about medicine. When people lie, they use different parts of their brains than when they tell the truth. And these brain changes can be measured by functional this devices, according to a recent study. The results suggest that this may one day prove a more accurate lie detector than the polygraph. It is a method... Snatch! MRI? Yes, or the magnetic resonance imaging. So if they take a snapshot of your brain, they can tell which parts of your brain are working and can tell if you're actually rooting in your past or making things up. Scary, isn't it? Mm. And wonderful. Unless you're a liar, I think it's <laughs> wonderful. If you're a liar, obviously it's scary. <laughs> and Elan, I encourage you to buzz in quickly to go against your opponents and we go to question five. All right, just moving right along to question number five. Uh, it's about diseases. A recent study revealed that eating cheongbukjang, which is popular as a well-being food in Korea, helps fight against this disease. A research team at Hoseo University in Korea announced that the peptide substances in the fermented beans help lower this level. It is the force. Elon. Cholesterol. Snatch. Your chance to answer. I'll finish the question. It is the force exerted by the blood against the walls of blood vessels. What is this force? Snatch. Blood pressure. Yes, high blood pressure or hypertension is what it is fights. And are you and are you fans of Cheonggukjang? Cheonggukjang, you know what that is, right? It's a very yeah. pungent smelling bean paste that's fermented. Um, is it one of your favorite foods? Yeah, we like it. It's good. Really? Mm. Have you ever cooked it in your own home? It has a ha it tends to smell a lot while right. in the cooking process. Right. And Elan, is it one of your favorite foods? Yes. Yeah, it's a very good, uh, healthy, traditional food. We go to question six. All right, moving on to question number six. Uh, it's about person. Recently, director Franco Zeffirelli claimed that this person may have been murdered by the gang that surrounded her in her miserable final days. She once had thrilled the world's opera houses and lived the life of a Hollywood leading lady. However, Elan. Marilyn Monroe. Snatch, your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. However, she later was overcome with bitterness and jealousy when her beauty, her voice, and her lovers left her. Who is this Greek soprano diva? Snatch, five seconds. Snatch. Maria Callas. Yes. Hmm. An interesting theory. What do you think? I'm afraid I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think none of us know, but it's interesting what Zeffirelli is thinking. Mm. We go to question seven. All right, question number seven is, uh, it's about health. Recently, an Italian research team stated that passengers should consider wearing a compression stocking in order to prevent this from happening. Elan. Economic class symptom. Hmm. Snatch, your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. This is also called DVT or deep vein thrombrosis and can develop in the veins of the leg as a result of sitting still in a cramped position for hours on end. It frequently occurs on long haul flights. What is this? Snatch, five seconds. Snatch. Deep vein thrombosis. And let's take a, look, uh, take a look at the hint. It is now open to both teams. Elon. Economic class, economic class syndrome. Yes, it is a syndrome. <laughs> it's very recommended that you do wear compression stockings while on the plane. Mm. Yes. Though I imagine it might be a little more uncomfortable for men than it is for women who are more used to wearing stockings. 
I think it's better than having deep vein thrombosis, though. It don't sound very pleasant. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I probably should go pick those up. I do fly internationally. Mm. Where, did, where do I get one of those? Hmm. I'll have to look into that. Anyways. And what an image we're getting. <laughs> and we go to question eight. Please don't think too much. All right, question number eight. Uh, it's about technologies. Italians love their mobile phones, and they also often carry out love affairs over them. However, they must be aware that flirting using this can carry a fine. Last month, a judge in northern Italy found a man who sent an unsolicited compliment by this guilty of harassment. Snatch. Text message. Yes. We would have also taken SMS or a short message service. Do you use text messaging? Quite often, yes. Maybe I could get fined as well if someone's getting <laughs> glass in. Really? Not here on the show. Right, well, <laughs> just between you and me, Dave. Okay, okay. Uh, just between the two of you. I see. I don't think that's true anymore. <laughs> We're gonna have and to we go to out. question 10. All right, moving on. We're going to move on to question number 10, I believe. No, no, no. Question number oh, 9. Oh, number 9. I'm yeah. sorry. Question number Going 9. Question 9. And uh, it's about countries. According to a quality of life survey by The Economist magazine, this country is the best country to live in. A combination of increasing wealth and traditional values gives the qualities... Snatch. Ireland. Yes. <laughs> the worst country, by the way, was Zimbabwe, and I suppose you knew a lot about the country. A fair bit. Mm -hmm. And, well, did you find it as wonderful to live in? It wasn't so wonderful when I lived. It's been a long time since I lived there. And How long has it been? Over, over 10 years. Mm. Mm. Well, it's great to have you in Korea. <laughs> Thank you. To join us on The Contenders. Let's move on to our next question. All right, now, question number 10, and it's about musicians. Recently, this musician was given a CBE, Commander of the Order of the British Empire at Buckingham Palace. He said that during his youth, he would have rejected the honor due to his rebellious streak, but he has now grown up enough to accept it. He was a member of the band Cream before going on to have... Snatch. Eric Clapton. Yes. And is he a favorite artist of yours? As a guitar player, yes, I really, really do like. Oh, uh, less as a singer? More as a guitar player. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Favorite song? Um, down and Out, I think, maybe. Why especially? Um, I like the lyrics, it's kind of good. We used to play it in a, we have a little band, and we used to play that particular song in our bar, yeah. Oh. Us, us and some other, us, some other people. And what's your band called? <laughs> we don't have so a we name. We never had a name. Uh, yeah. the, just the band. Well, maybe yeah. we'll call it Snatch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> we go to question four, 11 now. Sorry. <laughs> 14? Well, what happened? Okay. 11. No, question number 11 is about, uh, it's about titles. Oliver Stone's much-anticipated epic film titled This opened in theaters not too long ago. Not surprisingly for a Stone film, it received many negative reviews from critics and stirred up many controversies. It is a story of one of history's most celebrated leaders, the King of Macedonia. What is this film title? Snatch. Alexander. Yes. And did you get to see it? No. Not Have you? you? Just wanted to try out the buzzer. <laughs> All right, we go to question 12. Okay, question number 12 is about cars. Donated by the factory of this famous car company in Bologna, this, one of the fastest cars in the world, recently joined the Italian police force. With a top speed of 309 kilom uh, kilometers per hour or 192 miles per hour, many speedy drivers in the country of racers will not be able to escape from this car. What is this Italian luxury sports car? Milan. Lamborghini. Yes. Have you ever had a chance to drive a Lamborghini? Sure. You have? You did? You've been behind a wheel know, of a Lamborghini? No. <laughs> I'd like to. to. <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> yeah. I'm so nervous. Yeah, well, I'm sure that there are people who are actually considering maybe joining the police force oh, yeah, because they up. might be able oh, to. Oh, beautiful. Seriously. Really? Yeah, yeah, I would love to be a cop in Italy and drive a Lamborghini, except I have to learn how to drive manual first, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's actually kind of a sad truth of, of, of mine, that I don't know how to drive manual, but that's another story. 
I could teach you after the show. There right, let's go. <laughs> In your car, please. <laughs> All right. We go to question 13. All right. Moving on to question number 13. Uh, it's about word. This word comes from the Latin word for elsewhere and... Elan. You'll be quarters. Snatch. It's your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. And it is used to state that a person under suspicion was somewhere else. It is a form of defense usually... Snatch. Alibi. Yes. <laughs> and I think, Elan, you were thinking of everywhere, yes? And Snatch, you've got 460. And Elan, I encourage you, we go to question 14. Elan, that was a good, uh, that was a good guess, by the way. Uh, question number 14 is about foods. Scientists found that the key ingredient, uh, theobromine, is nearly a third more effective in stopping persistent coughs than the leading medicine, codeine. Research suggests that an ingredient of this could put a stop to persistent coughs and lead to new, more effective cough medicines. It is a food prepared from ground roasted cocoa beans. What is this? Ilan. Chocolate. Yes. We'll go to our last question of the section now. Stop the cough, but get cavities. All right. No. <laughs> anyway, so moving on to question number 15. Uh, it's about structures. India Supreme Court will allow this famous monument of love. Snatch. Taj Mahal. Yes. Built in the 1600s by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan as a shrine for his wife. And it is one of the World Heritage Sites. Have you been there, Snatch? Hmm. I've been to India. Well, if you win seven in a row, we give you tickets to Europe. You can save up your money and go there yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, great ending to a great game. Snatch, congratulations. You get to go on to the finals. <laughs> It was great to have you back on our show. Um, you can do a little Christmas greeting to all your friends and family. Yes. Uh, thank you for all guys uh, for a year, and I'd like to be a better man next year. Thank wow. you. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right, and same same with Young Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Christmas. Right. Merry Christmas to you, and thank you for joining us. And now, Snatch, you'll be facing our previous week's winners, the omnipotent team. They have one win under their belt. Now, how are you feeling? I feel good. I'm proud of Derek and myself for not being distracted by David's sweater there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hats off to our opponents. I think they got a tough question early on. But even though they're losers in this game, they're good guys. They're winners in life. Wow. Thank you very much for that. And with that, we'll be right back after this. Omnipotent team. It's great to see you again. We have Wang Shengmin and Peck Seung back on our stage. This is your attempt at win number two in a yeah. row. And so, how do you feel? Well, we're really glad to be back here. And then, uh, last time I was here, I was, I was kind of nervous and I was tongue tied. Hopefully, this time I'll be more calm. Yeah. All right. Good luck to you, Omnipotent and Snatch teams. Let's get on with our Christmas game. Now, in our final section, we'll give you five categories of questions, five questions each, ranked in difficulty, uh, 10 to 50 points. You don't have to choose them in order, just get the first question correct. You can choose the next question. What are today's categories? All right, today's categories are, starts with O, 100 what, medicine, game and sports, and it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. And we'll go with, starts with O, 10 points. This animal's latter organ has a pair of sharp, horny beaks and a file-like organ called the radula, used for drilling shells and rasping away flesh. 
It has large complex eyes and eight contractile arms. Each arm bears omnipotent. Octopus? Yes. Yeah, the word octopus refers to any eight-armed uh, cephalopod. And omnipotent, you're on the board, you can choose. Yes, we like to have, it's Christmas for 10. It's Please. Christmas, 10 points. Merry Christmas, contenders. I'm Envoy Joy Johns from the Salvation Army. Have you ever seen the many red pots of the Salvation Army on the streets at Christmas time? Let me tell you about them. The story starts in the USA, in San Francisco. Late in 1891, the Salvation Army was feeding more than 1,000 poor people. There was soup and some food, but it all ran out. What to do? So we took the soup kettle down to the docks, asking the people to keep the pot boiling for the sake of the needy. The Salvation Army Christmas Kettle Appeal was born. Due to the economic crisis, many people still go hungry. Please give generously to the Salvation Army Christmas Kettle Appeal. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. Now, let's think some more about Christmas, and here's what you've been waiting for. The words and music of this Christmas song were written in 18... Omnipotent. Christmas Carol. Snatch. It's your chance to answer till finish the question. 57 by James Pierpont for a Thanksgiving program for a church in Boston, USA. The sheet music was first published in 1857 with the original title of The One Horse Open Sleigh. The song was republished two years later with a new cover and this new title which the public chose. Snatch. Jingle Bells. It's been one of those famous Christmas carols. And now, Snatch, you get to choose. Uh, we'll take It's Christmas for 50. It's Christmas, 50 points. Every year, a few days around Christmas, Jewish people celebrate... A Omnipotent. Hanukkah. Hanukkah. It's the annual Jewish festival held for eight successive days. It begins on the 25th day of Kislev, the third month of the Jewish calendar, which corresponds to about December in the Gregorian calendar. This festival is also known as the Festival of Lights, the Feast of Dedication, and the Feast of the Maccabees. And this special event is called Hanukkah. The Hebrew word means dedication. And omnipotent, you get to choose. Yes, it's Christmas for 20 points. It's Christmas, 20 points. This literary character seemed to think that Christmas was all hum... Snatch. Ebenezer Scrooge. Yes. From Charles Dickens' tale titled A Christmas Carol, centering around a miser. And Snatch, you're 30 points, and Omnipotence, you're in the lead with 60 points, and you get to choose, Snatch. Uh, we'll go with games and sports for 10. Games and sports, 10 points. A form of this was a training game for English archers in the Middle Ages. The game was popular with Tudor monarchs from the times of Henry VIII. In its modern British form, the game is ordinary. Snatch. Darts? Yes, it's an indoor target game played by throwing these small pointed arrows at a circular board with numbered spaces. And Snatch, you get to choose. Uh, game and sports for 20, please. Game and sports, 20 points. Uh, by the way, this is a multiple choice question. Each team only has one guess, so be careful, okay? Um, of the following, which acronym does not belong with the rest? Number one, KB. Number two, KR. Number three, KO. Number four, KN. The others are of one sport. However, one. Snatch. 4KN. And now, Omnipotent, your chance. Five seconds. Omnipotent. Number one, KB. Actually, it is number three, which is a knockout. All the others are chess acronyms. As in number uh, four being KN, chess, king's knight. And now I will choose, why don't we go with medicine, 10 points. This food was once sold as a patent medicine. In the 1830s, it enjoyed a measure of popularity in the United States as Dr. Miles' compound extract of tomato. 
This food's name came from the late 17th century. Although the origin is uncertain, it probably came from a Malay word meaning fish sauce and from a Chinese word meaning sauce. Omnipotent. Ketchup? Yes, the fish sauce made of tomatoes. And omnipotent, you're increasing your lead, you get to choose. Yes, it's Christmas for 30, please. It's Christmas, 30 points. The idea for this was first conceived in Denmark in 1903 by a postal worker named Einar Holbell. Initially, snatch. The Christmas card. Omnipotent, it is your chance to answer. She'll finish the question. Money raised from the sale of these was to be used in assisting underprivileged children. When the stamps went on sale in 1904, the campaign was so successful that over four million were sold. It was then decided to use the money to help the thousands of children who were crippled by tuberculosis. What is this which is sold around... Omnipotent. Christmas seal. Yes. Place funds for poor, poor tuberculosis. And omnipotent, you get to choose. Christmas for 40 points. All right. It's Christmas, 40 points. Joel Roberts Poinsett was the first United States ambassador to Mexico, appointed by President Andrew Jackson in the 1820s. At the time of his appointment... Omnipotent. Feliz Navidad. Snatch, it's your chance to answer. She'll finish the question. Mexico was involved in a civil war. During his stay in Mexico, he wandered the countryside looking for new plant species. In 1828, he found a beautiful shrub with large red flowers growing next to a road. He got cuttings from the plant and took them back to his greenhouse in South Carolina. Nowadays, this plant is one of the most popular Christmas plants. What is it? Snatch, five seconds. Snatch. Mistletoe. Okay, we are looking for a Christmas plant. Omnipotent. Pine tree. Snatch, five seconds. Snatch. Christmas reef. Good try. We're looking for poinsettia. Yeah. Yes, they're the plants that they sell everywhere during the holidays. Um, the red, know. white. Yeah. It's the red. You've seen it though, at least, right? The big red plants. And once you have them over for one holiday season, you're not to throw them away. You right. just raise them for the rest of the year. If they're exposed to sunlight the entire year, they're turned green. But if you in around October, place it in a dark room or, you know, put a towel over it. It'll then revert back to its original red color and you can have a beautiful plant again next year. Anyway, so why don't we go with 100 watt, 10 points. This literary children's character originated in two children's books written by A. A. Milne about his son Christopher Robin in the late 1920s. Snatch. Winnie the Pooh. Yes. The 100 acre wood, loves honey. Tigger, Rabbit, and Owl are some of his friends, and Snatch, you get to choose. Um, let's try start with O, 50 points, please. Start with O, 50 points. Its form was known from the early Assyrian civilization. This was a prominent part of the architecture of the ancient Egyptians, who placed them in pairs. Snatch. Obelisk. Yes. The obelisk symbolized the god Ra, the sun god, and during the brief religious reformation of Akhenaten, it was said to be a petrified ray of the Aten, the sun disk. It was also thought that the god existed within the obelisk. This is a tall, thin, four-sided tapering monument, which ends in a pyramidal top. Ancient obelisks were made from a single piece of stone, and you see them in many ancient cities because they took them from Egypt as trophies. And Snatch, you get to choose. Uh, starts with O for 40. S starts with O, 40 points. This ancient Greek legendary hero was endowed with super... Snatch. Odysseus. 
omnipotent. It is your chance to answer. I'll finish the question. Superhuman musical skills. He became the patron of a religious movement based on sacred writings that are said to be his own. He joined the expedition of the Argonauts, saving them from the music of the sirens by playing his own more powerful music. On his return, he married Eurydice, with whom he is well known for his tragic love. Who is he? Omnipotent. Oedipus? Let's think. We have the classic love story, Eurydice and this musician. He goes down into hell to save her. He goes down into hell to save her, and he's successful, only she's told, don't look back. And remember? Snatch. Is it Orpheus? Yes, that's it, go. And Snatch, you're now in the lead, 140 versus Omnipotence, 100 points. You get to choose. Uh, we'll go with starts with O for 30. Starts with O, 30 points. This used to be one of the most powerful states in the world during the 15th and 16th centuries. Snatch. The Ottomans. Ottoman Empire. Yes, the Ottoman Empire. Created by the Turkish tribes in Anatolia, it lasted from the decline of the Byzantine Empire in the 14th century until the establishment of Turkey as a republic in 1922. It was named for a prince of Bithynia who began the conquest of neighboring regions and who founded the empire's dynasty around 1300. And Snatch, you are increasing your lead, you get to choose. Uh, we'll finish off, starts with O for 20. Starts with O, 20 points. In the 1930s, this instrument won professional popularity when sweet potatoes of different sizes were played in harmony in American popular music. This was developed from traditional Italian carnival whistles of earthenware, which were often bird-shaped. Snatch. Oboe. Omnipotent, it is your chance to answer. I'll finish the question. It could only produce one or two notes. This is an egg-shaped vessel of clay or metal and is sounded on the flagolet or fipple flute. It usually has eight finger holes and two thumb holes and may have a tuning plunger. What is this globular flute? Omnipotent, five seconds. This is a motif in one of the famous melodramas that are on TV right now in Korea. And its name is taken from an Italian word meaning little goose. Snatch. Of Avolino? Omnipotent, five seconds. We're looking for the ocarina. And so why don't we go with medicine, 20, second, uh, 20 points. These insects are known to be useful in the treatment of rheumatism. A number of sufferers have been given relief through controlled stinging. Several of these are placed in an inverted glass over the aching limbs. They soon sting, irritated by their captivity. It is a flying insect with a furry body that makes a buzzing sound as it flies. Snatch. B. Yes, it is a bee. And it is known in traditional Korean medicine, or oriental medicine as well, as a treatment. Bee stings. And snatch, you get to choose. Uh, game of sports for 40, please. Game of sports for 40 points. This sport, adopted as Canada's national game at the time of the Confederation, was played by Indians in all parts of the country. Snatch. Lacrosse. Yes, the word means the closure in French. Very difficult American Indian game, uh, Bagataway, was the original game. Have you played lacrosse? Uh, when I was in school. It's been a Tough long game time. to pick up, isn't yeah, it? It's not that easy. And it's pretty brutal because if you get hit with one of those lacrosse sticks, is it? Yeah, I mean, actually, I played too. And uh, getting hit with the stick is one thing, but. It's actually just a physical rough game. You know, you're running real hard. You know, you got a little bit of, uh, you know, the checking going on. But more than anything else, it's really, really strategic. And uh, that's what makes the game so awesome. It's a combination of soccer and ice hockey. And you're running around, you know, and there's a lot of hand-eye coordination. It's really fun. I hope it comes to Korea. I hope it picks up here sometime. 
and snatch you get to choose. Uh, game and sports for 50, please. Game and sports, 50 points. This game evolved from Pall Mall, which was played in France as early as the, uh, as the 13th century and then was later introduced into England in the 16th century. It was played on a lawn or court with long-handled mallets with which the players... Snatch. Tennis. Omnipotent. It is your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. Uh, with which the players hit balls through a series of wickets or hoops. In Japan and Korea, this game is also referred to as gate ball. What is this popular outdoor game? Omnipotent, five seconds. Hmm. This game is also described in the novel Snatch. Croquet. Yes. We would have taken long croquet as well. It's actually described in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And Snatch, you get to choose. I uh, will finish off Game and Sports for 30. All right, closing the category of Game and Sports, 30 points. All right. The origin of this is believed to have begun as a game in which country boys bowled at a tree stump or at the hurdle gate of a sheep's pen. During England's colonial history, it was exported to countries around the world, including Australia, Pakistan, India, and South Africa. Snatch. Cricket. Yes, this is England's national summer sport between two teams of 11 players. And what are you going to have next, Snatch? Uh, we'll go 100 watt for 50. 100 watt for 50 points. The novel published in October titled A Memory of My Melancholy Horse is Gabriel Garcia Marquez's long-awaited work in more than 10 years. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1982 for his novel Snatch. Love in a Time of Cholera. Omnipotent, it is your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. For his novel, 100 Years of Solitude, the prized novel introduced Latin American, cult, uh, Latin American literature to the world. It recounts the history of Macondo and its founders, the Buendia family, and also the history of this country. What is this country? Omnipotent, five seconds. Hmm, we are now looking for the country, Marquez's country, which he describes in 100 Years of Solitude. Portugal. Uh, omnipotent. Uh, por Portugal. Snatch. Five seconds. Snatch. Nicaragua. Colombia. Uh, we're looking for Colombia, Bogota, Colombia, 100 Years of Solitude, Buendia family from Colombia. Okay. <laughs> that was a good effort, guys. Yes, good effort. Good okay? effort. Right. Why don't we go with 100 watt, 20 points. All right, 100 watt, 20 points. All right, here we go. By taking a look at a country's paper currency, one can get a good idea of what or who is famous in that country. Benjamin Franklin appears on the US's $100 bill, and on Japan's 100 yen coin, there is the Japanese apricot tree. What is on the Korean 101? Omnipotent. Lee Sun Shin. Yes. He is the great, <laughs> he's the great general who created the turtle uh, or um, metal covered ship. And omnipotent, you get to choose. 100 was 30 points. 100 what? 30 points. The Hundred Years' War is generally considered to have lasted 116 years, beginning in 1337 and ending in 1453. The war began when King Edward III decided to make a claim to the throne of his neighboring country following the death of King Charles IV in 1328. Edward's claim was through his mother, King Charles' sister. However, the neighboring country's king did not accept the claim. He quoted the Salic law that bypasses female heirs and confronted the claim. What are these two countries? Omnipotent. England and France. Yes. And omnipotent, your choice. It's for 40, please. 100 what? For 40 points. All right. 
Argus is a creature of Greek mythology with 100 eyes, some of which were always open. Argus was ordered by Era to watch over Io, who was Zeus's mistress who sometimes took the form of a cow. When Argus was slain by Hermes, Era turned Argus into this bird. Omnipotent. Peacock. Yes. The peacock male has a very fancy tail, and when he opens up, it looks like eyes. And omnipotent, you get to choose. Medicine for 30, please. Medicine, 30 points. The liquid inside this fruit can be used as a substitute for blood plasma in an emergency. This property was discovered during World War II. Doctors in Fiji also discovered that surgical incisions heal faster when sown with sterilized fiber from this fruit. It is a common name for the fruit of a tree of the palm family. Omnipotent. Coconut tree. Yeah, the coconut. And omnipotent, you get to choose yes, between 40, two. please. All right, medicine, 40 points. Surprisingly, this was used as a standard drug of European pharmacology until the 18th century. Despite criticism within the Society of Medical Professions, doctors prescribed the powder made with this as a cure for internal ailments. Portions of many involved Egyptian dead were swallowed before science and common sense rendered the practice obsolete. This refer <laughs> omnipotent. Mummies. Yes. And <laughs> 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 now we've got one question on the on the board left. Now this is very interesting, omnipotent. If you get this, you tie, or. Right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You're tired. <I> so. <laughs> How and long has it been since you've been in school? <laughs> and Snatch, if you get this, medicine. you get the win. We'll see what happens. With our last question, this medicine, this. 50 points. Before this person turned to psychoanalysis, he did important work on neurology and was the first omnipotent. Sigmund Freud. <laughs> Since we are tied, we need our tie-breaking question. The Battle of Normandy in 1944, codenamed Operation Overlord, was the invasion of the Nazi-occupied Western Europe by the Allies. The Normandy invasion began with overnight paratrooper and glider landings, massive air and naval bombardments, and an early morning amphibious assault. Normandy is, to this day, one of the best known battles of World War II. In common language, this expression is still used to refer to June 6th. Snatch. D Day. Oh my God. Yes. Oh. The starting date of the invasion. Congratulations, Snatch. Very close match. Great job. You've won your first game. Various prizes are awaiting our winning contenders. Your first win will take you on a trip to Jeju Island. Your second win to Japan. Your third win will take you to China. And on your fourth win, you'll win a trip to Southeast Asia. On your fifth win, a trip to Hawaii. Your sixth win, a trip to the United States. And on your seventh win, you'll take the grand prize of a tour of Europe. We hope many of you join us. Omnipotent, we knew it was just a matter of the buzzer. Uh, but you do, however, have tickets to Jeju Island and you do walk away winners. This is Obviously, the day Thank before you. Christmas. This is the Christmas holidays. What do you want to say to your family and friends? Well, first, first of all, we thank for all friends who come here and yeah, Merry Christmas all. We had great games for I mean it's Christmas and we're happy that we can go to Jeju though. And then <laughs> we really love quizzes, so yeah, we're happy. Thank you. All right, Merry Christmas and thank Merry you Christmas. for joining us.
And now, Snatch, uh, we're giving you a Christmas gift of sorts, tickets to Teju Island. You've got your first win. What do you want to say to your friends and family? Uh, first, we want to say great job to our opponents. They made a really tough game. They made it really, really nervous at the end as well. Uh, I want to say Merry Christmas to all my friends and family in Ajax, Ontario, Canada, as well as our fans in Jinju watching right now in Zio Ricos. Hats oh. off to you. Merry Christmas. All right. Um, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my mom if she's watching and to my students in Masan University. Merry Christmas, guys. Congratulations again on your first win. <laughs> and with that, we have a new winner for our Christmas game. Now, all of you at home, we hope you have a wonderful holiday season and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.